Hark, what light through yonder window breaks? Tis the tech news, and Windows, it breaks. Microsoft's Patch Tuesday update is causing certain Windows machines to stay on forever. The update was supposed to fix over 100 security vulnerabilities, including one that was already being actively exploited in the wild. But uh, <clears throat> it seems to be causing some new issues. From the user's perspective, everything will look normal. So the shutdown animation plays, the screen goes dark, and then the PC just keeps running. Evidently, System Guard Secure Launch just threw a tantrum when it was paired with the January patches, causing shutdown commands to be ignored. Security achieved. Microsoft did ship an emergency out of band fix on the 17th, just four days after breaking everything. So everything's good? Well, not so much. The same update also broke remote desktop authentication for Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 users with credential prompts that either failed completely or looped endlessly. Classic Outlook with pop accounts started freezing indefinitely. The app would look closed, but Outlook.exe would keep running in the background, blocking you from reopening it. And some users got random black screens. Also, File Explorer stopped respecting desktop.ini customizations. At this point, Windows updates feel less like improvements and more like watching your uncoordinated uncle try and deep fry a turkey in your driveway. Dangerously close to the garage. The RAM shortage, like the numbered Star Wars movies, doesn't just keep going. It somehow gets worse as time goes on. According to reporting from the Wall Street Journal, data centers chasing AI and cloud growth are expected to consume more than 70% of all memory chips produced in 2026, which leaves consumer PCs, laptops, and I don't know, every other device competing for a much smaller slice of the supply pie, keeping prices high and availability tight. Making matters worse, Bloomberg reports that US Commerce Secretary Howard Lutnick has warned overseas memory makers that they could face tariffs as high as 100% unless they commit to expanding chip production in the US, a move that could further disrupt supply and raise costs in the near future. And the pain isn't stopping with RAM. As we seem to be constantly covering, shortages are now spilling over into GPUs, high capacity SSDs, and even traditional hard drives, turning a memory mess into a full blown component chaos. If this story is pissing you off and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't worry, we've got you covered. When this tech news is done, go check out LTT's recent video appreciating some of the positive things going on in the tech world. I wish it wasn't the case, but yes, tech news these days does require oh, a therapeutic chaser. Google just filed a notice to appeal the landmark antitrust ruling that declared it an illegal search monopolist. The company is asking a court to pause implementing the ordered remedies while the appeal plays out, which could drag on for years if it goes all the way to the US Supreme Court. Google's defense boils down to three arguments. One, people use Google because they just gosh darn want to, not because they're forced to. Two, the judge ignored all of the intense competition from AI startups. And three, their deals with Apple and Mozilla are totally normal business relationships based on quality. Apple chose Google because it's the best, not because it owns the entire internet. Ha, <laughs> that would be crazy. You sound crazy right now. Now, if you guys are thinking, man, has this case ever been dragging out a long time? You're not wrong. The original suit was filed back in October of 2020. And then the ruling that they were in fact monopoly came in 2024 with the remedies phase concluding in late 2025. The remedies stated that Google can still pay Mozilla and Apple to be the default search engine, but that any new deals are capped at just one year. They also have to share portions of their search index data with competitors and offer syndication services to rivals. Given the appeal, Google is asking for a pause on the data sharing and syndication requirements while the appeal plays out. But you don't have to make an appeal to me to check out our sponsor, War Thunder. I've played a few combat games in my day, what you might call a combat game veteran, but nothing compares to War Thunder. It's the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's free on PC, console, and mobile. There's nothing else quite like it. I feel like a god, god of, war. of war when I command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 nations, spanning from 1920s biplanes to modern jets and battle tanks. The vehicles look, sound, and feel so real, it gives me flashbacks to my old land party days with the boys. But then I remember, those games suck compared to War Thunder. So join over 70 million players in one of the most comprehensive vehicle combat games ever made. Play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and mobile, and unlock a massive bonus pack, including vehicles, boosters, and more using our link down below. You smell that? I love the smell of sweaty gamers in the morning. Shakespeare once wrote, therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, 
and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. And the brief pieces live by that. Spotify just announced another price hike, the third US bump in about three years with its premium subscription going from $11.99 to $12.99 a month with other plans rising too. Unfortunately, this is Yet another sign that rising subscription costs are the new normal for streaming fans. Meanwhile, Shadow Library Anna's Archive, who previously backed up Spotify's library <clears throat> without their permission, has been ordered by a US federal judge to delete its scraped WorldCat data and stop scraping or sharing it. Though it's worth noting that the site isn't likely to comply. <laughs> Yar, they be renegades, they do as they please. They likely even use ad blockers. Elon Musk is claiming that Tesla will release new AI chips every nine months, beating NVIDIA and AMD's yearly cadence. He tweeted on Saturday that their AI5 chip is supposedly almost done, and this comes a mere six months after he announced that it was finished. Musk is saying he expects these will be the highest volume AI chips in the world, which given that they're shipping in millions of vehicles could be true, but volume production is delayed until mid 2027. So the timeline is confusing. Musk has also announced he's restarting the Dojo supercomputer project that Tesla shut down just last year. Dojo is Tesla's custom supercomputer for training full self-driving using videos from Tesla vehicles. Musk killed the project because he said it didn't make sense to divide resources, but apparently now it does. XAI is in trouble with the Environmental Protection Agency who apparently still exists, who knew? They ruled that the company's Memphis data center illegally used natural gas generators that were not properly permitted. XAI has been relying on a loophole that lets certain turbines operate without standard emissions checks if they are portable and or temporary. Well, images show that the site has nearly doubled its turbines, which raised pollution concerns and drew scrutiny over Elon Musk's AI operations environmental compliance. The EPA decision could, and sounds like it probably should, slow XAI's expansion plans in the area. With Elon's companies, it's a balancing act, you know? He makes electric cars over here, he does a little unfettered polluting over there. It's give and take. Everything in moderation, right? Scientists at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology have developed a spray-on powder that can rapidly seal life-threatening wounds. The chalky spray works in about one second by instantly turning into a hydrogel when it hits blood, stopping bleeding fast, even in deep, irregular injuries. It's highly absorbent, works in harsh conditions, and stays stable for up to two years, showing promise for both combat and emergency medicine as a potential lifesaver. Though it is still in the research Research stages. This is all the excuse I needed. I'm getting into carpentry. <laughs> Lose a finger at the table saw? No problem. Just powder that bad boy right back on there. That's how it works, right? Too late. I've already ordered a bunch of dangerous saws. Finally, TikTok quietly launched a standalone drama app called Pine Drama, where every episode is a bite sized, one minute or less serialized story that you scroll through like on TikTok. It's going to be cliffhanger after cliffhanger like a soap opera, but presented in vertical video. <laughs> All your Boomerang's favorite stuff is really coming together, isn't it? The free, currently ad-free app is live in the US and Brazil on both iOS and Android, and it has genres from romance to thriller, giving users the ability to react in real time with other viewers. And it's got classic features like watch history and favorites. For me, this raises a very important question. A minute isn't long, but is this actually gonna be better for our attention spans than TikTok Classic? I guess it couldn't be any worse. At least you don't have to pay any more attention to the tech news until Wednesday when we'll be back to tell you all about it. Screw it, one more Shakespeare quote, here we go. If we do not meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then this parting was well made? Bye. <laughs>